four ways on how you can buy UK property with no money, how you can invest in property with no money, how you can get started right now with no money. It's exactly what we're covering in this video. So if you are getting started right now, you want to get into property right now, you know, you are building the confidence to be successful in property right now, then this video is for you. Now, if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Cam Devady. I'm the founder of Premier Property. And when I started, I didn't have any money. So what I'm sharing with you is simply, you know, personal experience on how we do this at Premier Property and, you know, how you can be active in property without any money or start without money. It's absolutely doable. I'm living proof of this right now and I'm going to share with you exactly what I did and the ways that you can do this right now. Now, in order to get you quality in this video, rather than just do one video for you, I'm actually going to do a four part video series. So in these four parts, I'm going to share with you the four different methods of getting into your property, like what I say, with no money. So let's jump straight into the first one, one of my most favorite ways of doing deals with no money, and that is joint ventures. Now, you may have heard of joint ventures, you may not have heard of joint ventures, but let's really clarify what this actually really means. So joint venture is when you are actually involved in a project directly. So you have more than one person that's involved in that project, and that is a joint venture. Now, joint venture can take the shape of many different ways and different means, and I wanna share with you the different structures as we go through this video right now today. We'll be doing that in about the next 10 minutes, okay? So be rest assured, we've got a lot of content, so hopefully you've got a pen and pad, you're gonna be writing this down or watching this video again for the second time, third time, fourth time. That's absolutely fine, do it your way. Now, joint ventures, well, one thing that we've gotta be you know, careful of and you've gotta really be um, aware of um, is PS13-3. So PS13-3 um, is regulation for FCA regulation. So must be aware of this, must adhere to this. This is exactly what we do at Premier Property. And I wanna share with you honest, real practical information, how it really actually works. This is the point of these videos, right? So PS13 slash three, just be aware of that. But um, there are so many ways that you can make a joint venture work. And uh, you know, I'm gonna share with you this uh, right now. Now, the thing is, how do I know about joint ventures? Because the first ever joint venture I actually did you know, was with somebody very close to me. And you know, this joint venture didn't happen because it was an investor or a hedge fund. It happened because you know, they actually cared about me. So you know, do you have people around you right now? Do you have friends and family, colleagues, people that you know of long standing, where those people would invest in you if they knew that you have learned the detail on what to actually do? Now, you know, like I say, the first person I um, actually did a joint venture with, um, it was actually my mum. And my mum, you know, she, why did she invest in me? Well, first of all, she, you know, she trusts me, she knows me, and also she knows my passion about property and how much learning I've done and that I've been in the property field for a while and she, know, she knew this. Now, because she trusts me, then she invested the money. So keep in mind, there are many different reasons why people will join venture with you for money. It's not necessarily always the case that is, you know, that uh, you know, you haven't got anything to bring to the table. You've got a lot to bring to the table. So think about you. You know, what? Why would someone actually invest in you? What are the reasons they would do this? Well, are you a passionate person about property? Are you a person that takes action? Do you get actionable learning? And have you got that common sense? Of course you have, right? Where you're learning and you're then taking the action from this. Well, if you're that person, then there are many people out there who will, who want to know you because they need someone for them to run around and do the part, the active part of the work, which um, maybe they don't want to do. They just want to lend the money. They just want to put the money into the deal. So you can be this person. You can be that enthusiastic person who puts in a little bit of gentle effort, which means that you make property work. Hopefully you're following what I'm saying here. Now, you know, thinking about this, and that's one of the reasons. Now, another reason is also that people join venture with you. So let's say you're in the property field in some shape and form already. So let's say you're a contractor, you're a carpenter, you're an electrician, you're a general builder, you, you know, have some form of building experience that you can bring to the table. Well, that's a great reason why people will actually invest in you, where they'll bring the money in and you bring in the other part, which is your skill set. So think about your skill sets. You know, what other skill sets do you have? You know, are you an architect? Maybe you're in finance or, you know, you're, you're used to doing 
uh, and dealing with systems and processes. Maybe you're that type of person. You know, it, maybe it's your, you know, your personality. Maybe you're a people person where, you know what, you just attract people because you have this magnetism about you and you have this passion for property, which is infectious. Maybe that's you. You know, so think about what it is. So many different things that you can bring which are outside the box where someone else brings the money and you bring the other part to the table. So feel free to write this down. You know, as you're watching this video, at the end of this video, you know, think about these things that you have because there is, I'm sure, there's a lot that you can bring to the table. What is it? Please identify it so you can bring it to your JV partner where they will have the money so the money is available. The money is always available. Money is always available. There is so much money. Coming from a poor background, I didn't know that when I was younger, um, but for sure, I know this right now. So in terms of joint ventures, yes, I, I did my first joint venture with my mum. Since then, we've done millions of pounds of joint ventures. And in these millions of pounds of joint ventures, I'm sharing exactly how we do these. So, you know, one of the key parts of this is actually having a system that you've got in place to do joint ventures. Now, we're going to come to that on another day or on another video. But what I want to share with you right now in this video is, you know, how you can structure your joint ventures. So your joint venture can be formed in different ways. So how we do this at Premier Property is in three different ways. So that joint venture can be in personal names. So you can be investing personally. Somebody else is also investing and you join in together. You marry up together and you are involved in a project. That's one way of doing it. Another way that you can do this is create a limited company. Now at Premier Property, you know, as investors, as you know, we're investing all the time on a regular basis, this is my preferred method when doing a direct joint venture with somebody. Now, when I say somebody, remember, PS13 slash 3, we've got to adhere to that. So it shouldn't be a pooled investment. So you want to keep it really, if you can, to one person that you're dealing with within that limited company. This works the best from our perspective at Premier Property. So limited companies are great because within a limited company, what you will find is that there is clarity, first of all. The roles are crystal clear. Mr. Joy V partner, Madam Joy JV partner, you are bringing in the money and I am doing the active role. We're going to be actually being in the field. We're actually going to find the deal for you. We're actually going to work the numbers out and we're going to relay that and communicate with you. So do you see? So you will have your JV partner where you know, you've already discussed this and this is formulated in a limited company, but you can do it in a person one to one or you can use LLPs to do this as well. Now, so different ways, different methods of creating your JV structures. Now, thinking about this also, you know, your JV partner will be understanding that, uh, you know what, there is some form of share in that JV, right? So typically, you know, people tend to start from 50-50. So what is 50-50? So people used to say when I started in joint venturing, you know, people used to say, oh, your joint venture is 50-50. Well, you put in half of the money and I'll put in half of the money. And, um, they, but they were expecting us at Premier Property to find the deal, to work the deal, to um, make sure the numbers are right, to make sure we've got the contractors there, to project manage, to make sure there's an exit there as well. So they, they were expecting all of that as well. So, you know, you can sometimes get taken for granted, but you know, the thing is, you really gotta value yourself is what I've noticed. Because to be fair, if I'm being completely honest with you, when I started, I never used to. And people do take advantage of that. So, you know, right now, think about you. So maybe you're starting out or maybe you're an experienced investor. So whichever, wherever you are in your journey, please, 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 you know, start to value yourself right now if you're not already. So how does this apply to you in joint ventures? Well, think about what actually is 50-50. If you're doing all the work, like I've just discussed, you've done doing all these things, and the person is just bringing the money to the table, then surely that is a 50-50 JV. Now, you might even decide that's actually a 70-30 JV. 70 to you and 30 to them. It really depends upon how you're building your confidence. But if you're starting out, absolutely, you can start from that 50-50, right? Think about this. So think about it. Think about how you can actually make this doable and how you can relay you know, your worth to somebody who's actually bringing in money. Now, like what I say, you know, we did this when I didn't have money and as active investors right now, we've got anything between seven to 12 projects on a monthly basis. What you find as active investors is that, you know, you do want to find more money from other investors. You want to find money to come on in. 
And this is the reason why we do JVs right now. So I suppose what I'm really saying here is that, you know, you can start a JV whether you're starting out and you, you might need the money. So to do deals with no money is what we're discussing here. Or you already might be active in property, but you might just want to do more deals so that you can do more deals with none of your own money. So whichever way you want to do it, whatever your perspective is, you know, really think about what I'm sharing here with you. And if you're following me, then you will, you know, really understand that you can do many more JVs and you can do much more using these types of structures. So think about your 50-50, think about your structure of your JV. And, you know, also think about, you know, have you got the learnings that you really need to do a JV? So how can you give your JV partner the confidence? Because, you know, put the shoe on your foot, put your shoes on your, you know, be in their shoes is what I'm saying. If you're in their shoes if, and, they, you know, they've got money, then surely they want to know that you have learned what to do. That's it. You might not have done a gazillion deals. It doesn't matter. You might not have done one deal. It doesn't matter. But if you have the active information that is coming from investors and developers who are active right now, then that information becomes yours. That information you can then use. And that means that you will attract money. So please, please, please start thinking about JVs. Hopefully this is giving you food for thought. Hopefully you're noting down you know, the, the many comments that I'm making right now, the information that I'm sharing with you right now, as it's just coming through. This is not scripted. I'm just sharing with you my heart on how we do JVs. So, you know, if you're enjoying this video, you know you can subscribe right here. Now, I'm going to share with you in a moment what we're covering in video number two, video number three and video number four. It's coming up. And, uh, you know, it's just subscribe right here. And you know you can press that bell icon, which means that you'll get a notification when every time a new video comes up that um, I'm doing. Typically, I'm doing two, three, four videos on a weekly basis now. So, uh, so that you make sure that you get the cutting edge video, just click on this right now.